In this video, we will take a look at relational database management systems, specifically uh, how they work with SQL Server, what the service architecture is like, how the file system works, how you can use the user interface or work with code to inter uh, interact with it. So let's get started with that. And uh, the first thing to know is that a SQL Server Relational Database Management System works different than some of the other ones you may have used. For many people, they have used Microsoft's Access or something like Excel to manage data files. When I work with these tools, <clears throat> such as Access, I work with a single file at a time. Microsoft SQL Server doesn't work the same way. I work with Access. I work with a single uh, access, excuse me, Excel. I work with a single file at a time. Now, it's true that the file may have many spreadsheets, and it's true that in Access, the file may have many tables, but it's working with a single file. And SQL Server works a little bit different than all that. With SQL Server, you have a service architecture. And the way it works is there's a piece of software running in the background. Go to services. <clears throat> and after it gets installed, under Microsoft SQL Server, let's see. you will see it running. There we go. These are my installations of SQL Server. Let me zoom in. <clears throat> so these are three installations of SQL Server. And that's one of the interesting things about SQL Server. You can install it multiple times. Uh, each time you install it, you have to give it a unique name. If the name is MSSQL Server, which is the default name, then you can just connect to it with a default connection. Default connection just means you put in your computer name and it connects. Otherwise, you have to put your computer name in and then a slash followed by the name that you gave it when you did the installation. So I'll show you that in just a minute. But the point is that I have three different installations of SQL Server on here. And SQL Server is a piece of software running in the background. It is a service architecture. And what happens is that I make applications that connect to that service architecture. And those pieces, those services are actually managing the individual files. So each one of these ser three servers can manage hundreds of individual database files. And you can interact with those hundreds of files by having a client application connect to this. So this sits in the middle. We end up with a client application. We end up with actual database files. And then somewhere in the middle is this service. That's what these guys are. Ooh, that's a bad line, huh? We And the client software talks to the service, and the service talks to the files. <clears throat> and with this architecture, you can have many of these clients, and you can have many of these files, which gives it a lot more flexibility. So that's how that works. Uh, on, the, um, on the hard drive, <clears throat> when I go through and I make a, a, a file, on the file system, I'll see that there are um, there's an actual data file called a, a master data file. Let, let me uh, show you. I'm going to go ahead and open up a client piece of software. The one that you use most often is Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, it's open. Let me uh, make a connection. And here I can put my computer name. Let's see, this one is, I think, RS Desktop or something like that. I don't remember the computer name. I never type it in because I can just use the word local host or even a simple period. 
Uh, that will both uh, both those will allow me to connect. But let's say I say localhost. That way I don't have to worry about my computer name. Uh, I then go through and either put a, a backslash to connect to one of those three services like SQL 2014. I think that was one of the options. I guess I better check. SQL 2014. Yep, that's it. So that means that I would connect to that installation. Or if I want to connect to this other installation, I put in there MS SQL uh, server. It's not case sensitive, thank goodness. No one. I connect to that. Now, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and make another connection. Connect to database engine. I'll do the SQL 2014. And I'll connect it again. And I'll do one more. This is going to be my uh, default installation. MS SQL Server. <clears throat> Like I said, it's not case sensitive. I'll just make it easier to read. And this is kind of weird. I've always thought this was odd. Now, it could be that I've just built it wrong. But if I look closely or not, it doesn't look like it. This is an oddity with Microsoft. So the way you connect to the one that's called MSSQL Server, which is your default installation, and you just put the name of the computer. I've always thought it would have been best if they would have actually put the word default in there or something like that, but hey, what can you do? So here's what we have currently. We have the default. We have the MS SQL Server 1. That's that top one. And then we have the 2014 here in the middle. And so we see that these services, I'm connecting to them and working with it from a client piece of software. Now I don't need all this goodness, so I'm just going to disconnect from everything but my default installation. That's the one you'll probably use most of the time anyway. And I went and make a new database. So I just right click on database. So I say make a new database. And I'll give it a silly name. And I'll need to I think I'll tell it where it should put the, the database file. If I don't, it'll go ahead and put it in a default location, which is perfectly fine. I just have to know where that default location is. Let me actually grab a hold of it. And if I uh, open that in File Explorer, It actually tells me I don't have permissions, but I'd like to continue. Sure, why not? Let's elevate up my permissions. One of the problems here is that you have, I have a lot of databases in here. Now, you're a brand new installation. Made it so perhaps I'll just put it someplace simple to find, especially for uh, like in my classes. So I think what I'll do is I happen to have Actually, I don't have one yet, but I'm going to. I've got a, um, let's see, I've got a folder on here. I think I'll call it a folder called data. And that sounds like a great place to put it. So this is on my D drive. I'll go ahead and say I want the data folder. That's where I'm going to go ahead and place this new database. Now, I just made something up, so it's nothing, nothing really special. You'll also notice that's going to make up two files. And uh, so now when I go to the data folder, I'll see the two files. The first one actually contains the, the data itself, all the, the names, the phone numbers, and email addresses, and whatever. And the second one tracks changes to the first. So the master data file is what's used to store the data. And the log file is used to track any changes to the master data file. And those two work together. In Access, it's a single file. In SQL Server, it's multiple files. 
So this client software I have can connect and interact with that one file, but I don't do it directly. I talk to the service, and the service talks to the file. So this is the client, this is the service, and these are the files. So to interact with that, I can come over here, I can look at my AAA database, and I can do something like make a new table. That's a horrible column name. I'll just come back to that later. And now inside that uh, database, there is a table with a very horrible name for a column. And I'll edit the top 200 rows. And I'll put some data in. Okay. And let's see. That's pretty much it. And now if I open up another piece of software, like Microsoft Excel, I can interact with it from there. Let's see, get some data from SQL Server. I'm using a newer version of Excel, so um, this connection piece looks different on so look, uh, different machines. They've just recently changed it. And I'm looking for the AAA database. And uh, sure, I use my current credentials, so I should have permissions. And I'm not really sure I care about the uh, Christian support. So I'll just load it up. And I should be seeing some data. Oh, there we go. It's going to take a while. There we go. So I now have two pieces of client software interacting with my database file. I've got the Excel spreadsheet reading the file. I've got the Manager Studio managing the file. But they're all going through the service to talk to the actual files themselves. And that's how it works. And when you want to work with it from the user interface, you do it like this. If you want to make a new code window, I click on the new query window and I can say something like create table demo. Um, something a little bit better, ID integer. I should put a semicolon in here. I like the code I want to run, and that made a brand new table in that file again. <clears throat> you can't see it, but it's actually inside of there. By sending the SQL command over to the service for processing, and then the service processed it, it went into that data file, and the log recorded the change, the, the change that was a new table was made. So that's how the system works. Now hopefully you understand a little bit more about um, Let's see. Really hate the way they uh, <clears throat> they do that, where the uh, presenter shows up on a different screen. But hopefully now you know a little bit more about how relational database management systems work, how SQL Server works, what service architecture is, how the file system works with that, and how you can interact with it from the user interface or code. Take care.